Welcome to Quincy in Focus, Quincy Access TV's news magazine show. My name is Jonathan Caleri, and I'm the executive director here at Quincy Access TV. Leading off this edition, Mayor Thomas Koch held a press conference at Quincy City Hall to announce plans for three new buildings on Hancock Street. Mayor Koch was joined by developers Sam Slater of Tremont Asset Management and Joey Akari of Broadway Hospitality Group. The new development will include housing, retail, a restaurant, and a three-story performing arts center. Uh, three buildings, about $300 million in investment, and that's private investment, uh, about 800,000 square feet of total retail, entertainment, and housing. And this is going to create almost 1,000 construction jobs, and we'll have hundreds of permanent jobs over time. 1469, 1445 Hancock Street, uh, Mr. Slater is proposing a 15-story, 200-unit residential building, 8,000 square feet of restaurant, and uh, retail, um, 4,000 restaurant, 4,000 retail. Uh, it's what we know today is the arcade building. It's the long building across from Alva with the big windows on the second floor. Um, and Mr. Akari is on the other side uh, of two buildings in between uh, the uh, Family Dollar Store. In between those two projects that both Sam and Joey are talking about, the City of Quincy is going to be moving forward with the City Council to purchase the two buildings in between. Um, with new office buildings in the works, a wave of residential uh, buildings as well, close proximity to transit, blossoming business community, beach access, golf courses, uh, an impressive culinary uh, scene here in the city. Um, the mayor's vision has made Quincy one of the most desirable places to live, to be, and to do business in. Um, and for me and for, for our group and our family, it's an honor to be here participating in that in some way. Um, so, thank you for that. Last year, we announced uh, our, our plans for our first project at 61 to 71 Hancock Street, uh, just off Neponset Ave. Um, this development will serve as, in our view, a gateway to the city from Boston, from 93, uh, and from that part of town, a symbol that big things are happening here in Quincy, um, and, and also in an area of the city that we think um, could benefit from some new uh, ideas and development. This, this uh, development went from 15 stories up to 20 stories, back down to 15, and eventually ended at, at seven stories. And at the, at the same time, the most important thing for me, you know, I'm a restaurant guy first, um, and a developer sort of second. The most important thing was to create density downtown and to bring people downtown. And what better is a great restaurant? And so we want to do something special here. And, besides just a first story restaurant. We wanted to make it really, you know, big and inviting. And, um, you know, you can sort of see the windows all, all open up and uh, really pours out into the new park. And again, as, as we sort of looked at this development and then the park idea came along, you know, the plans changed so that the restaurant sort of pours out into the park. And then, you know, at Christmas time, maybe the park, you know, there's a Christmas tree here, and it sort of becomes the center of town, you know, and so that's really important. The Abbey, a new residential complex located next to the North Quincy MBTA station, recently held a ribbon cutting ceremony to officially open the building and marks the first opening as part of the site's redevelopment. Officials on hand, including Governor Charlie Baker, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, and Mayor Thomas Koch, spoke how the need for housing in the Boston area can be met with projects such as the Abbey. Both the Lieutenant Governor and I attended the groundbreaking here and this was a very much a four bank shot that involved um, the City of Quincy, the MBTA, the Department of Transportation um, and associated other entities uh, locally to pull this off and put it together but it's a 600 unit transit oriented development at its core and it comes with a significant investment in the Affordable Housing Trust to the City of Quincy and will provide um, a significant opportunity for people 
to live in this beautiful development, to be near the great community of Quincy, and to be a very short ride on the red line from the city of Boston. And as we continue to make hundreds of millions of dollars, probably billions at this point, of investments in the modernization of the red line to go along with a number of projects like this, uh, this is all part of building a better, stronger commonwealth, and especially uh, working on building housing uh, across Massachusetts. This was a no-brainer. I mean, you know, when the governor set forth the whole transportation-oriented development program, you know, the challenge was really the state agencies in some ways. And the MBTA uh, has a lot of authority, uh, but, the, you know, they have some trouble sometimes getting there. So I appreciate the governor setting the ground rules uh, to, to allow this to go forward, because when you look at it, we're filling the housing need to an extent, right? We're building units, which we need drastically. There's a lease here that the MBTA gets money for every month. It goes toward their budget, which we know they need some help with. There's real estate taxes go to the city of Quincy, which helps us put teachers in the classroom and policemen on the street. Uh, this was a seven and a half acre asphalt lot. Uh, so this is an incredible improvement to the gateway of the north part of our city. And I'm grateful for the T and everybody's involvement on this. Uh, maybe as we continue to go forward, we get more efficient at it because we, we've got some other locations in Quincy that we'll be looking at going forward. Last week, we announced three new buildings in the downtown. Uh, two 15-story buildings and a seven-story building. Two of those buildings, uh, Sam Slater, who has also got a permit for a building down the street, a 16-story. Uh, but you know what? If this wasn't happening, I'm not so sure Sam Slater would have been looking at Quincy. This was a huge message to the investment community. The city is open for business for all the right reasons. We certainly need more housing. It's one of the barriers to growing more successfully uh, here in Massachusetts. Uh, we don't have enough housing of all kinds. And so we need more cities and towns to understand the role that housing can play to redevelop and imagine their downtowns and main streets and make sure that people of all ages uh, can afford and can access housing that makes sense for them. Recently, State Representative and Speaker of the House Ron Mariano and State Representative Tacky Chan visited three Asian-owned businesses in Quincy to show support for local businesses which have been most affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The representatives emphasized how the businesses they visited and others will have an important part in rebuilding the economy coming out of the pandemic. So, uh, as we know, this is AAPI uh, month, and uh, the House Asian Caucus has pushed uh, hashtag uh, shop AAPI month uh, to challenge our uh, fellow colleagues and the public to uh, provide some support for Asian businesses in Massachusetts. And today, uh, the speaker has great making time to visit uh, three locales here uh, and the wonderful job at South Coalmatter to talk about the incredible building for them to make well, excuse COVID. me truth be told if you didn't come here first i wasn't coming <laughs> <laughs> you still made me a chairman somehow so figure that one out well uh, like so a judgment <laughs> we're going to visit uh, dr abdul over at lux dental who is a dentist who has managed a dental cupid who found dental services during the lockdown for people in need of dental services and he's actually south asian and we're going to finish a campaign marketplace to talk to some business owners impacted by COVID and the current anti-Asian racism and have a conversation with them about the impact it's had on the business for the last 16 months. So, you know, we're very happy to be in the speaker's district as his guest <laughs> to visit uh, various uh, uh, people of color shops, particularly Asian Americans, uh, to talk about important issues to them. And it's great to have the speaker uh, ear on an important issue, particularly as a speaker who has more people of color than I do in his district. That's right. So the That's right. Speakers are normally we're in a sensitive of the diversity of Quincy, uh, uh, even though I only represent like fifteen percent of non-white folks. <laughs> <laughs> we joke about this all the time. Um, I my district is is truly an amazing district, and when I graduated from Quincy High School uh, a, a long time ago, I think we were less than three percent minorities in the city. Now we're at about 28 or 30 percent. Closing on 40 in excess. Closing on 40 in excess. Okay, I stand corrected. And in my district, I have a temple, a Muslim mosque, 
a couple of Protestant churches, a couple of Catholic churches, and I did have a synagogue, but they, they sort of closed down. So the diversity that, that this place brought to my district was, was a real plus, real plus for me. Uh, it it fo focused me on the changing district that I represented, a district that has gone through remarkable changes harmoniously. If you go into one of the schools in this district, you'd be shocked at how well these kids get along. And it's been a real shot in the arm, I think, to the city and to, to everyone who's active politically. It, it, it helped Tacky to, to see that he had a chance to run and win. And he did work his tail off, but he did it. Uh, registered a lot of folks that have yeah, yeah. been registered, <laughs> but he did it. And he did it because he had the confidence of acceptance in this city. And I think that's what we bring. And, and we're here to call attention to the fact that if we can do it, the rest of the state should be able to replicate what we're doing here. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be here. I think it's important that, that we stand together, that I stand with Taki anytime I can to highlight the fact that we are a diverse community, we are working well together, and we will continue to work well together. The Quincy Police Department and Boston's Children's Hospital recently co-sponsored a bike safety rodeo held at the Quincy DPW. Children learned about bicycle safety, completed a skills and agility course, and were given free safety equipment. Hi, my name is Barbara Tijeralamo, and I'm the Injury Prevention Coordinator at Boston Children's Hospital. And we're out here at the Quincy DPW trying to help kids stay safe and have a really great and safe summer. Um, injury is the number one killer of children 1 through 25 and many of these injuries are completely preventable with the use of bike helmets and car seats. So that is our job is to keep kids out of the hospital by doing community events like this. So we're going to be here till 2 p.m. and you can come by and get a free helmet and all kinds of great information. So uh, we have some giveaways for you, some stress balls, some water bottles, and again, we're going to fit you for a helmet, uh, some coloring blocks. And so uh, you can do a bike course, and then at the end, we uh, have uh, some some medals for everybody who finishes the course. So that's always a bonus. And uh, yeah, we got some snacks and some drinks, and so you can come on down and take a break from the beach and come visit us. And you can always check out uh, Boston Ch or childrenshospital.org slash injury and get all kinds of information about our program and what we do. Um, or you can call us at 617-355-7332. And we do all kinds of events just like this, uh, as well as car seat classes for parents. And uh, we teach kids also about brain and spinal cord injury. Okay, so I'll show you guys just so that you'll know, all right? So when we have your first class, we're going to put our arm out like this, okay? All right? Can you do this too? I'll come in the front seat. So this is left, right? Now, I'm going to show you to do right like this. Okay? Same arm. We're not switching arms. The same exact arm. Right? All right? And then for stop, we're going to put our arm like this, okay? So let's do left again. Let me see you guys do left. I'm not going to do left. How do you do left? How do you do left? Right? Yes. Yeah. Right now. Side to DPW. Left. 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 Practicing riding your bike and, and so using your gear. This is a new bike, and it was a great opportunity for her to get a chance to get a little more practice with it, and also hear some messages about bike safety from other adults besides just her parents, help reinforce wearing a helmet and doing those kinds of things. The residents of Squan were back celebrating Independence Day with the neighborhood's annual 4th of July flag raising and parade. The parade, returning after last year's cancellation due to the pandemic, saw a great turnout and plenty of neighborhood support. Oh, 
gathered on early night. What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last week, whose broad stripes and bright stars roll the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red the bombs were stinging The flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave the land of the free and the on the 4th of July, residents in Marymount held their annual parade that marched around the perimeter of the neighborhood. The parade's theme, Marymount celebrates freedom and independence, guaranteed plenty of red, white, and blue participation by neighbors. Marymount's awake finally. Squad up just doesn't go to bed the night before. You guys sleep in and just stand
Freeway TV recently hosted middle school students for a TV production clinic as part of the Quincy Recreation Department's annual Sports and More Summer Offerings to the city's youth. Participants got a crash course in studio production, produced PSAs, and had plenty of fun. Why did the pony get sent to his room? Because he was horsing around. <laughs> <laughs> what did the buffalo say when his little boy left for school? Bye, son. <laughs> Why do we tell actors to break a leg? Because every play is a cast. <laughs> what do you call a bee that comes back from the dead? A zombie. <laughs> what did the triangle say to the circle? You're pointless. <laughs> what's the worst? What's worse than finding a worm in your apple? Finding half a worm. <laughs> I'm just ready to beat Jose. All right, and then we have Joe, also known as Jose the Ginger. Is there anything yes, you want to say? Yes, I'm a ginger. No, that's it. Anyway, I'm ready to lose. Let's get straight to the questions. All right, the first question is for Mia. What is close, the closest planet to Earth? A, Jupiter, B, Mars, C, Saturn, or D, Venus? Um, <laughs> Mars. And it turns out you are unfortunately wrong. The answer was A, Jupiter. I went over this for like months in science class. How did I not remember this? And that is unfortunately no points for anyone. We're gonna try and yeah, well, so I think it's amazing you played that without uh, going missing. Well, yeah, if you go in a big enough group, then not all, they can only have so many people go missing there. So what we did is we just got together in a big group and only like, Half the ships that just drove out there went missing. Again, I don't know any you, of those. Are you a big reader? But not with those books. All right, um, well. Let's just guess B. B, let's see. Is it B? Oh, I am so sorry. It's the queen of nothing. I feel like whoever wrote these questions just putting A for all of them. A fight has broken out at the local park. We're here to investigate. Why are you hitting him? I don't like ginger. My ribs. Get down. You heard it here, folks. They don't like gingers. If you've ever visited the Thomas Crane Library in Quincy Center, you've no doubt noticed a wide array and wonderful looking plants and flowers that surround the walkways. Members of the Walston Garden Club, the caretakers of the gardens, recently held a garden stroll to introduce the public to the different varieties planted and bring attention to the beauty surrounding the library. One of the important parts about this garden and why it's been able to last is that this, these flower beds, when they were designed, when they were first constructed, they have irrigation system in it. And without the irrigation system, we really couldn't have survived. Uh, it's such a huge place and to try and drag out 150 feet of hoses every week or every time we had a dry spell, it would have been soul crushing. So having the, um, the irrigation system makes it all possible. 90% of the garden is either uh, perennial flowers or uh, shrubs and semi-shrubs and even or like this magnificent uh, ornamental grass, uh, uh, zebra grass. Um, and so the, the, the trick was, since it's a, a four season building, it's got to have a four season garden. And so in the winter, there's still plenty of stuff here. It's just low to the ground. The colors are muted, lots of golds, a lot of bronzes, uh, but there's texture and there are patterns and form. And I am rather proud of it in the winter. 
but it's always in the spring things start popping up the the crocuses and then the daffodils and um, and even little dwarf irises um, and the, this green right here it doesn't look that great in the heat of the summer now but it, it will look beautiful all winter long. It's green and then it has these beautiful small blue flowers. The whole thing turns blue. But then of course, as the summer, as the weather gets warmer, more and more flowers start to pop up. So for the people who might think, where the heck was that stuff? Well, it was just lying, waiting for the warm weather to come. And so we have many, many beautiful flowers. Um, the bed is quite large. It starts here, goes down along the walk, and swings around so that there's quite a large pie shape just outside of the atrium windows. And that was another design um, feature to, to consider. This is important work. And the kids meet every year, and they work to raise funds for different nonprofit groups, uh, individual projects that support uh, children around the world. And it's just been a terrific, terrific opportunity to teach ourselves about gardening, to teach ourselves about design, and to make something beautiful that the patrons, the staff, the, the, the daily commuters and tourists will come and compliment. This is a very, very happy place and we have been so glad to share it with you. That's all for this edition of Quincy in Focus. Our next episode, look forward to some highlights of the August Moon Festival, which made its return back to Quincy Center after last year's cancellation due to the pandemic. If you'd like more information about Quincy Access Television or are interested in becoming a member, visit our website at qatv.org or call 617-376-1440. My name is Jonathan Clary, and thanks for watching this edition of Quincy in Focus.